All right, here we have a problem where we have two disks, or actually one disk that is spinning, another disk that is at rest. So disk A is spinning, disk B is at rest, and we drop disk B on top of disk A, and there is some type of sticky thing or something like that, a rubber that makes it so once it collides with, with disk A, it on they initial or, uh, instantaneously start rotating together, and we want to figure out what happens to the speed of disk A once it interacts with disk B. And we're gonna solve it algebraically and then we can throw in some of the numbers that they gave us and see if we can see what happens. So this is very similar to a problem we might have done in the past where you have one object moving, another object at rest, and then they interact and stick together. And that was in our momentum unit. So we can use our ideas of momentum, except we're going to be working through how things interact rotationally through momentum, through their angular momentum. So first thing we gotta remember is that Angular momentum is the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. And we also have to remember that the moment of inertia for a disk is equal to one half its mass times its radius squared. It may or may not be useful in this, we'll see. And that just like with uh, linear momentum, that rotational momentum or angular momentum is also conserved when things interact. So we can use the idea to try to solve this. So let's apply conservation of angular momentum to this. So in the beginning, we have the angular momentum of A plus the angular momentum of B. And that is going to equal the angular momentum of our A plus B combination afterwards, just like we did with linear momentum. Now, in this case, it's nice because disk B is not spinning at all. It's just being dropped straight down. So even though it's kind of falling, we don't really care about that right now. We care about its angular momentum and it has none, at least around the, the axis that we're talking about here. So I can cancel out that term and say it's angular momentum in the beginning is zero. So really we just have the angular momentum of A and that's gotta be equal to the angular momentum of the AB combination after the collision. So we can now expand this. So the angular momentum of A is gonna be the moment of inertia of A times the initial angular velocity. And that's gotta equal the moment of inertia of A plus the moment of inertia of B times the final angular velocity, since they kind of move together as like a super object afterwards. We can expand this a little bit further. We can put in their moments of inertia. So we have one half M A R A squared times omega one, or initial omega equals one half M A R A squared plus one half M B R B squared. Those are the moment inertias of the two disks times the final angular momentum. Now in our case right now, you can see that some nice things are gonna happen because in our initial case, at least, the masses are the same and the radii of the disks are the same that all the moment of inertia are going to drop out. So this is going to drop out, that's going to drop out, that's going to drop out of everything. And we end up having, you know, the only thing i a little bit careful of here, because I cancel those out, the halves don't completely drop out because there isn't, the way it's written now, they don't drop out. So you're going to have a half omega one equals a half plus a half equals omega final. And actually we have our answer then. We have that omega final is gonna be omega initial over two. And now we can pop in what they gave us. So that's gonna be 10 radians per second over two. And the final angular velocity is just gonna be five radians per second. Now this is kind of a nice special case where the disks are identical to each other, so a lot of stuff drops out. But let's, but kind of the part B here it says, what if disk B was 200 grams? So let's see if they were different masses. How would this change? So again, we can still use our first ideas here up here. The only thing different is when we get to the point where we cancel out all the moments of inertia, we can't really do that. We have to keep the mass part in at least. Although the radiuses are the same. So let's just rewrite this. We have one half mass a radius squared times omega one equals one half mass a radius squared plus one half 
mass b radius squared times omega final. So in this case, the radiuses still drop out. They're in all the terms. The um, now we get let's see one half mass a times omega one equals one half mass a plus one half mass b. That whole thing times omega final. Now we can pop our numbers in. Actually, we might as well saw, uh, we can drop a half now. So we have let's see if we divide both sides by m a plus m b, we get mass of a over the mass of a plus the mass of b times omega one equals omega final. Now we can pop our numbers in. So we have, let's see, we've got 100 over 100 plus 200, which is our new mass. I'm not worrying about the units at this second because it's a mass divided by a mass. Whatever the units are, they're going to cancel out. So I don't have to convert it to kilograms. Times, let's see, our initial omega was 10, and that equals our omega final. And if we do this, we get that our omega final is going to be a third of our initial angular velocity, which is about 3.33 radians per second. And again, the mass of the object that's, that's dropping onto it, it was greater. So the final angular momentum is going to be less, just like if you had a, a car that was sitting still and you hit it with it, but it was heavier than the car to hit it, the final velocity of the two car system will be less. The same thing is true here. And a third little part, there's one little extra piece that says, would your answer change if the second disc was made of ice? This is kind of trying to sneak in there that there is no friction. And yes, my answer would change. If the second disc was made of ice, if B was made of ice, when it hit it, there would be no friction and it wouldn't change. There'd be no forces, no torques interacting between the two objects so that object B and object, there would be no way for object B to interact rotationally with object A if there was no friction to apply torque to each other. So object A wouldn't slow down at all. Now, again, in real life, that's probably impossible to happen, especially since B is on top. But I think the way they're saying it, or we can say at least if there was no, um, if it was made of ice, it wouldn't be able, they wouldn't be able to stick together and there'd be a lot of slippage. So less momentum would be able to be transferred from um, A to B and A wouldn't slow down as much in any case.